weddings, as we mentioned before. So, Matt, there's been two weddings throughout the James Bond franchise. Famously, the Ladies and Be One on a Majesty's Secret Service, where he was the groom, and then Bond appeared as light as best man in License to Kill. Now, can you just walk us through the suit that he wore in Honor Majesty's Secret Service and explain why it's special or if it's special at all? Yeah, so that is a um, what what was known at the time in the UK as Black Lounge. That was it was um it was it was a popular uh, you know um, um you know way of dressing for weddings as well as for um, more formal business by some probably more old fashioned types of people. Like you, like you'd see men like in the Saint wearing that. Roger Moore would go visit some businessman, some banker, and he'd be wearing an outfit very similar to that. And because that outfit, I think, came about in, early, in the early 20th century, and at the time of Under Majesty's Secret Service, that Ida, that outfit was still popular, but it didn't have too much more life left in in it. What um, makes it so a wedding suit, though, Matt? It's just it's um it's more formal. It's like I'd say it, it it's slightly more formal than a uh, regular lounge suit because it has the look of a morning of a more of a you know, morning dress with um with a black coat and uh gray trousers and a gray waistcoat. Way Lazenby does it is uh which typically the trousers would be striped or checked and the the, the waistcoat would have a little contrast with the trousers. With Lazenby's outfit the the uh, waistcoat and trousers are are like a solid light gray and they match. Mm, mm. So that's a bit of a different look. You know, the uh the 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 uh, the jacket is um you know is a dark uh I'm still never quite sure if that's black or midnight blue because it traditionally that would be black but in many of the photos of Lazenby it looks like it's like a midnight blue and is it still but relevant it, today so if I was to get married or get hitched tomorrow um would I be able to wear this suit and someone would go crikey mate you look like you're out of the 70s or 69 69 60s yeah and and that actually is more of a 60s look than a 70s look now I do think that some people would might might think it looks a little outdated but I think it could fit in well I don't I think I think if you really want to dress like Bond at your wedding you you could yeah so and also what you know what makes that jacket really special are the peaked lapels right Um, because that that kind of sets it apart from what could actually just look like a blazer if it had regular notch lapels. Um, and you know, it, it's kind of interesting how this outfit doesn't actually look that much different than a blazer and gray trousers. But it's technically more formal. Hmm. The the fabrics is made of make it more formal. It's just it has a very clean look. And uh, you know, it, it lays me wears it with a, you know, a very formal satin tie, or, you know, a wide cutaway collar shirt um and you know that that gives it a very very uh, special look because you know i mean i guess right now in the uk most people just wear um like a lounge suit to get married in oh people just wear christ oh. but, well, <laughs> if, if it's, they, it's if going they to hell in a handbasket as the americans say for wedding suits over here it's all look dudes it... get married over here but don't really know anything about suits and style which is fine because you know i don't claim to know anything about it either um, but when you get married, it feels like, oh, I've got to get dressed up. I've got to get a suit. So you you find that people will just buy a very cheap entry level suit, which will be around about 120, 150 pounds. Um, it would be very, it would look cheap and it would be a, a pretty poor fabric. And throughout the course of the wedding, it would gradually deteriorate. And mm. of course, though, when the groom has to get that, then all of his mates would <laughs> the best men. <laughs> I've been to a couple of weddings where that, there's been three best men. And of course, if you want to all wear and look the same, you don't all go out and buy bespoke suits down Savile Row. You all do the same. You go, right, okay, well, let's just put a bit of money in the pot and get the same cheap suits. So <laughs> you know, throughout the whole day, you're just looking at an ensemble of... Uh, look, I'm, I'm being quite cruel, but this is perhaps just the pattern of weddings that I've been to recently. So Yeah, it's, a, it's similar in the United States, but we have our own way of doing it over here. Ooh, okay, tell me. So what, what people do in the United States is the people who don't know anything, but they, they know they want something special for their wedding, if they go to men's warehouse and hire a suit. Right. And they're often... They're not just 
they're not you know, it's not just a regular suit it's not it's not like a very nice it's not like a like a classic dinner suit what it is is just it's it's something you're halfway between that has really odd touches you you might get like often we'll see nowadays you see people in light gray suits that have gray satin trim and covered buttons they, and and uh, you know and then the whole wedding party will will get this because you know for, for um, very often in the United States, you men will have a best, you'll have a best man, and then you'll have about maybe six or eight groomsmen. So you have a ton of people. They all have, they're all hiring the same outfit. They might put like, uh, they, and then you know they get these, you know, shiny polyester waistcoats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with, um, got a lot and, of that over here. Yeah. Now everyone also these days everyone's wearing light brown shoes, mm. which I don't think are formal enough for a wedding. Yeah. And I so I mean look, over here we have say, if you want to go out and just get a cheap suit, you'll buy one for as much as you can hire one these days over here, and you can go down to say Burton, or or Topman, and you know this isn't a slight on either of these companies, but let's just say you you kind of get what you pay for. Now in America you've you know you've got Brooks Brothers etc over there would you say that you should be able to go down to these sort of places and get yourself a decent suit um, oh sure well, and Brooks Brothers you can I know you're a fan of Brooks Brothers but I mean mm. would you would you be able to like say kit out three or four groomsmen within a moderate budget no not at Brooks Brothers right okay Brooks Brothers they make decent suits and they charge um you know fair prices for them but they're uh you're getting, um, I mean, you know, a very, I mean, like, you know, it's just a kind of a nondescript suit over there. Whereas people now, you know, they usually rent a suit at Men's Warehouse or, or Joseph A. Bank, or they might go buy one at Joseph A. Bank, which is quite cheaper and often might look better than something you can hire. But people, I think people don't want to buy something. They, they, they feel like it's just better to rent it. Because they're also not, people don't want to wear something like normal for their wedding. A lot of people, they think they have to wear these really odd wedding suits. You know, sometimes they they have these things that 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 uh, are maybe very loose takes on a frock coat or something that looks Victorian or Edwardian, but actually has no basis in those, and they've just fooled people into thinking it's something historical. Matt, I know that you didn't really want to talk about your wedding suit and we won't but i gotta press you on this how much time have you thought about getting a wedding suit and how easy was it for you to actually get to the suit that you wanted in terms of like the decision was it like i want that suit from that company i want that shirt from that and i want to look just like this you know it well actually what it well, well i first had to decide what the dress code would be for the wedding and that i had to decide on with my fiance. Because we, we couldn't, you know, I mean, Jana, she loves dressing up. She wanted to be the most formal wedding. Now, in the UK, if you have a very formal wedding, it's morning dress. The problem is that no one understands morning dress in the United States. If you, if you write morning dress in a, on a wedding invitation, well, no one, will own, no one here owns it. Uh, no one would, I don't, even, I don't even know if you can rent it. And uh, when, they, when they see a morning dress on a wedding invitation, they might, they might actually think that they might mistakenly just picture a you in, in after the the o and uh so everyone turns that's, up that's, uh, like the beginning of fun in black suits <laughs> yeah yeah so so that's just not even that's not really an option in the united states unfortunately just because people don't understand it and here you know for the past so i mean the past four decades it's been very common for uh, people to wear black tie for weddings in the United States. So that's actually what my wedding is going to be. It's going to be in the evening. Right, okay. So it is uh, it is a black tie wedding because that is the most practical way to have a, a, a more formal wedding. Actually, you know, one of my grandfathers, um, at his wedding in the 1940s, he wore, um, it, it, um, it was, I guess, uh, not long after the war, he wore um, um, white tie. So his wedding portrays him in a in a full evening dress, in a tailcoat, white bow tie, and he looked great. And that was definitely not something that was done in the UK back then. The morning dress was probably what everyone was wearing then, you know, in the the late 40s. Yeah. 
So it's interesting right. what you say about morning dress. So if people still aren't really familiar with the term morning dress, I guess you picture Roger Moore in a view to a kill at the races. And there you have maybe the closest resemblance to morning dress, which isn't too dissimilar to what you'd probably wear to a wedding, right? Yeah, well, I think in, yeah, a, um, yeah, a mid-gray or light-gray morning suit where you have three pieces that all match, um, that's um, definitely something that you can wear to a wedding. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember, you know, at, at uh, Prince Charles's wedding to Camilla, he wears the more formal version with a black morning coat and um, you know, striped trousers and the uh, linen waistcoat. He had a slip in his waistcoat. He he went all out at his uh, wedding and for, with Camilla. That's one of the best I think examples of morning dress that was that's ever been done. But then there's also Prince Charles's um, his races outfit, his which is you know similar to what Patrick McNee wore in in uh, View to a Kill, that yeah. light gray morning suit, which is also just beautiful. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are those are great ways to wear morning dress to a wedding, as opposed to what. Um, the hired outfit that it features in License to Kill. <laughs> that that's actually very very common for what Americans were wearing um, for weddings in the 1980s. Okay, it, it's it's. What's just wrong with this fact. suit? What's why does it look like it's a hired suit rather than Rogers, um, Rogers cut in a view to a kill? Shall we say? Well, I mean the fit. Yeah, the, the fit the fit of a morning suit is. The morning suit has to be fitted much more. Oh, I'd say. I mean, it, it's it, it's just it's such a much more complex garment than a regular suit. The morning coat has to fit very well to look really good. Um, that's why it's just bespoke. It makes a big difference for that. And Rogers is bespoke, whereas Dalton's was from a higher shop. Yeah, it really doesn't look good. Yeah, poor old Timmy the, D. Yeah, I mean. He was obviously forced to wear whatever Della hired Della! for them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's really not a good look. But um, mm-hmm. also, I guess just well, the, the wing collar, which has slowly gone out through the first half of the 20th century until no one else and no one people in the UK have not been wearing wing collars for much of the, yeah. you know, for you know, for over half a century now with mm-hmm. with those. And their wing collars are, uh, yeah, they just. It's just, it doesn't have the right look, and and especially with Dalton's wing collar shirt, it's just a cheap shirt and it looks even worse. Yeah, the right. cravat, clip-on cravat, is is horrible. Those are not even allowed to wear it at uh, they're forbidden at Ascot. <laughs> you know, because it, 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 when you, it, it just it looks like a costume. It doesn't look like someone something that someone would really want to wear, and it, it's very similar to what people were wearing to weddings these days. In that. It's just not something that people, no one ever actually really likes. They just feel like they have to do it, yeah. and that's what was going on. Well, actually, I feel like we've covered quite a lot of ground here with the wedding suits, Matt. I think we've done quite well, haven't we? I mean, I do have a soft spot for the License to Kill wedding because I, I was at the church just a, like last month. You know, as I was uh-huh. down in Key West and doing the tour, and the guide just goes, and over there is where they filmed the blah, 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 and that's the church. And I was like whoa fucking hell and it was right opposite our hotel i mean i could see it from my bedroom window from the hotel window just how so um yeah i I mean i love the scene i guess the suit leaves a little bit to be desired and also do you know what i was thinking about on a majesty's secret service was i noticed that q had the same tie as bond so that makes me think that q was best man at bond's wedding (laughs) you know it's uh i mean if it wasn't, it was either Q or M, and right. it seems more like Q. I, I hope, in a way, it was M because then you might get a decent story or two in the speech. But, I mean, right? M, M is M is a bit more like like Bond's dad. Yeah, so maybe M. M is more of the dad. Yeah, and I mean, like imagine how fucking crap Q's speech would be. <laughs> although, although Q is definitely not Bond's best friend either. Yeah, maybe he just did away with the best. It's, it's, the, the best man or well, maybe money penny got up and did a speech uh, who knows 